موسیقی Wrong said, my very well learned colleague who happens to be Miss Hajar Sati. I happen to be Shazad Asan Khan, and it's a fine, sunny, hot morning over here in Islamabad. The open prayer that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to kickstart your day with us. But first things first, hello, Hajar. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing today? Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much, Jazakallah Khair, for introducing me, Shazad. So I think we have transitioned into a post monsoon period, right? Yep. Because we were witnessing intense sort of rainfall happening in Islamabad. And uh, when we transition away from the summer, I think it is the autumn season coming in, right? Yep. And the beauty of the autumn season, and especially with the people who are interested in nature, especially poets who are writing about the nature, um, is that you often get to witness a lot of maple trees, right? Or the chanar ki uh, like we call it in Urdu, right? Yep. And um, this is the beauty of the chanar tree is that uh, its uh, leaves bloom in the autumn. Op- autumn season and it dies in the spring season yep. right and Iqbal says lahu rang patte chanaro ke dekhe you wow. utte janaze baharo ke dekhe yeah, right wow. baharo me dekhe Pro- sorry um, and this is how I witnessed that but um, having said so I wanted to bring this attention uh, towards all of the people who are watching there and that too in Islamabad is that uh, you hardly get to witness the maple trees in Islamabad you know and maybe in a couple of places and a lot of time what you see is the bottle brush um, the trees right which is not an indigenous uh, species and this is the the problem which is happening especially with a lot of the housing society is that they are planting a lot of trees which are not the indigenous species which does not suit the environment for example you see there is a lot of palm trees lined up across the housing society and that's not a very good choice because palm tree is not a native of Islamabad right it is usually found near the beaches where there's plenty of water or near the oases in the desert area right mm. and I think um, with, with regards to Islamabad it's a very well planned city and people who are sitting in the helm of the is probably at the uh, CDA, they need to devise some sort of a mechanism or regulations that whatever species you are planting here, it should be indigenous like shisham, acacia and whatever the trees is. I'm not the expert wow. in the field, um, probably because we are the generation that did not grow up a lot in, in the uh, rural areas, our parents migrated towards the urban centers and we yeah. do not know that much about the flora and the fauna, but it's vital that we protect our flora and fauna and that too in the wake of the climate change that is happening. And thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> I think you've, uh, you know, you've hit the nail on the head, Hajra, because I think we've spoken about it multiple times as well, that people yes. really need to make sure that, you know, that uh, they focus on the indigenous species as well. Unfortunately, with, you know, all the types of different types of yes. trees that you've spoken about, is usually because they want the beautification of their own society. And, and Shazad, so so see, that's what they do. You've seen in Islamabad in the past, uh, I think, two or three decades, there is uh, a blooming of the, or the surge of the disease called asthma, right? Yep, and that's yep, yep. because of this bottle Poland, brush tree. Yeah. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. the pollen trees that have been planted across the Islamabad. And that was not the case when our parents grew here, when our g- grandparents grew up here, because there was no pollen tree here. But because of those invasive species of the bottle brush or the pollen trees, we are witnessing these sort of diseases so it's very much important how interconnected this entire cycle of the nature is that we must be thoughtful about the planting trees. Yes, there is a conversation. Yes, there is a drive to plant a lot of trees uh, for making the afforestation happen. But you should be need to be mindful that when we are talking about the afforestation, uh, it should suit the needs of that local area, of that soil, of that land, because not every land or soil is suitable for every type of wow, tree out I there. I mean, it's beautifully put as well because just yesterday, you know, my daughter who's in sixth grade, you know, she came up up to me and the question was about deforestation yes. and how we really need to move on towards newer uh, uh, reusable energy resources as well. Now in addition to this I think I would want to kind of add on over here where how you said that you know that our generation is not really into you know gardening Door and whatnot. And fauna, yes. But we have seen that you know generation before us for example my mother you know she would always speak about Gule the Peri and Petonia and I don't know, you know, so she many knows different... So, so many names, <laughs> yeah. right? We don't know that, and right? They, and they still know, you know, what to kind of, you know, do to kind of get that, you know, the flower Flourishing and that, the yeah, fruit, yeah. you know, because just yesterday, because I'm maintaining a lawn right next to my house, Shukar Alhamdulillah, so I've had like two gardeners and they brought in some seeds and I was like, okay, so when I looked at the seeds, I couldn't figure out which <laughs> seed was what, true, true. you know, so, so, so one was like, this is pieces, you know, this is sim- this and this is mm-hmm. what. And I was like, okay, this is very confusing for me. So I took the seeds in front of my mom 
I was like, okay, can you tell me what seed belongs to what? And she actually got 90% of it correct. And I was like, my God, I think we should have invested our, our time in it as well. And the only reason why my mother knows about it is because her father was uh, into gardening. And yeah, they would yeah. do it together. It was a hobby of theirs. And even my khala now in U United and, Kingdom and wins the prize almost every year for gardening. Wonderful. The wonderful. And probably because they were raised up in more agrarian society, right? And we grew yeah, up in a more... They lived in F7. They had a bigger house. They could do it there. No, no, of course. Yeah. That was the case. But, you know, with the industrialization going on, with the urbanization going on, maybe they did not witness that sort of mushrooming, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sort of the urbanization that we are witnessing, right? So we are totally devoid of the nature of the flora and fauna. Like you mentioned, I cannot name the tree. Right, I can see this is a tree. I don't know which type of tree, right? Yeah. But, but I'll maple trees, I think, I think with maple trees, the, you know, most maple trees that I have witnessed are probably in cantonment areas, probably somewhere in Aptabad, right? True, yes, you know, yes. And it just feels so lovely to be around those trees Chanal. when the, you know, the leaves are falling down. You know, there's a gush of leaves somewhere around. You know, when the wind's blowing, you could see the leaves True. flying around as well. I mean, it's a different feeling. But okay, now let's come back to what we we're discussing True. today. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously on the 8th of September, it was the International Literacy Day. We spoke about it yesterday. Unfortunately, didn't get a chance to kind of have our conversation with our wonderful guests over here as well. But while we are talking about International Literacy Day, this year around, you know, the theme is the multilingual and uh, multilingual approach towards learning. So when we are to kind of speak about it, so it's promoting multilingual education, literacy for mutual understanding and peace. And there are going to be other facets in it. Now imagine that multilingualism is, uh, is a common practice for many. We can empower people by adopting a first language based multilingual approach mm -hmm. to literacy development and education. And uh, you know, we really need to kind of l speak about the first language model as well. And you know how we can create peace with multilingual languages uh, model. I think that's something that we really need to discuss. We do know how many children are out of school over here. So when we are to speak about literacy, Unfortunately, the definition of literacy cannot be that you can read and write only. I think it needs to be better than that mm -hmm. because we're saying literacy. We're not saying that, you know, that do you have an ability to write, read or write. I think for people to understand what's written while they're reading is more important for people to comprehend, for people to have that critical thinking in their own, own minds as well that, you know, that, okay, if you, there's something that they have learned that they can reproduce with their own words. So I think all of these things come under the umbrella of literacy as well. So to kind of speak about it, we're very lucky that we've been joined by some wonderful guests over here in the studio. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Aja, why don't you do the honors? Of course, thank you so much. And without any further ado, we are very glad that we have been joined by someone who has, uh, who has been doing uh, and spreading this knowledge and light of the knowledge to a lot of students now. It has been over more than two decades that she has oh, been into this field. Um, without any further ado, we are very glad that we have been joined by a very highly qualified educationist. She happens to be Ms. Bushra Nader. Assalamu alaikum, Ms. Bushra, and thank Wa you so much for coming to our show. Wa alaikum. It's a pleasure having you, Ms. Wow. Bushra, and obviously we are going to unroll our conversation, but we are very glad that joining Ms. Bushra is one of our students, and we would like to further ask the question, like Shazad mentioned, about the literacy, about the education, and what are the newer modern forms of the education that kids would like to speak about and voice their opinions. We are very glad that we have been joined by a brilliant young butt in our studio. He happens to be Kaz Awan. He is a student of the sixth grade. Assalamu alaikum, Kaz. How, yes, are how are you? I'm fine. How are you? It's wonderful to have you over here. You know, you, you look amazing, you know, in this school uniform. This reminds us of our school days as well. <laughs> thank you. The confidence do you have, mashallah. You know, if your parents are around, thank you so much, you know, for, uh, you know, investing so much time on Cas sure. because it's so evident, alhamdulillah. So, Cas, to get started with our topic, what is literacy? Can you make us understand what is literacy? Literacy is the basic skill and foundation for lifelong learning, critical thinking, and active citizenship. It empowers the individual and society. Wow. Uh, literacy is a part of education and I think that education is the most powerful weapon with which we can change ah, the world. Wow. And that's a wonderful very quote, nice. that too coming from such a young bird. So Ms. Pushra, why don't we uh, uncover or dissect the conversation that Kaz mentioned and he talks about ah. that, about the critical thinking, right? So in modern education system, how important do you think is the critical thinking? Because a lot of jobs that are going to be created in the future when these kids graduate, yeah. you know, we do not have those subjects, right? So how are we going to equip them with the modern needs of the education? 
Mr. First of all, I would like to extend this definition of literacy sure, sure, sure. that uh, you talked in the beginning that uh, it's not only read and write, mm -hmm. but actually these are the basic skills, yep. reading and writing. When you learn to read and write, it opens up a whole arena of learning, knowledge um, and information to you. Mm -hmm. uh, just think that an illiterate person who cannot read so how much he is missing? Yeah. He doesn't know what are his rights. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know his value. True. So he is facing all the injustice in society. He is the one who is facing inequalities. Mm -hmm. So once, this is the most powerful tool or weapon mm -hmm. with which you can change that your world yeah. and with which you can change your fate. Right. So being educated mm -hmm. is, I think, the most beautiful thing. Uh, which we can uh, have for our society. That's one bit of it. But now imagine I'm going to give you a situation and how, you know, how often do we come across this situation where, you know, we end up arguing with somebody and, you know, all of a sudden, you know, there's a statement, you're an illiterate. Now imagine that we're not referring to the point that, okay, you cannot mm. read or write, but we are referring to the point that, you know, you certainly do not have that background which is required to understand oh. the complexity of the situation that you're in. You know, so most of the time that's how we refer to it, True. you know, in our yes. communal language, right? You know, education is there in three domains. That one is knowledge, yeah. the other one is behavior, Mashallah. and the uh, third one is skill. Yep. So, when you are educating yourself, you have to educate yourself in three domains. Mm -hmm. Your behavior should also manifest that you are a learned person. Yep. Oh, that's, that's true. true. That's so, true. sometimes uh, we don't understand and we are only replying <laughs> just <laughs> for the sake of replying. Uh, we are listening to reply to yeah, a person yeah. Defensive yeah. Listening, yeah. And, and we are not listening to understand the situation. <laughs> so, I think education <laughs> should bring a change in behavior as but, well. But, wow. Madam, we've seen and I think Shazad might agree with what I'm going to say is that when we were young, when we were students, when we were enrolled in the schools, we were not, okay, we were taught the basic survival skills, but I think one of the most ah. important thing is that uh, we need to have, like you mentioned, that your behavior should manifest that you are a learned person, true, true, right? True. And one of the things is that regulating your emotions. So, for example, ah. when a child is very young, we should teach him that, you know, when you get angry, ah. how you need to respond to the situation. True. And that is something I do see, we feel there is a lot of deficiency in our nation. So, if you go on the roads, if there is a ah. rush, we would see how our, you know, anger drives us and you know we yeah, get crazy yeah, yeah, over yeah. that right yeah. um and we would say all sort of foul things and you would witness very hot ah. conversations exchange yeah. yes, yes. Ah. exactly yeah. and if person is parked wrong you know instead of accepting that you know he is very um uh, you know truthfully going to say that you know this is my right of doing that right and this is because they were not Actually, regulated for, as a for child for these reasons we are having co-curricular activities in okay. school okay. Okay. for their uh, personality development right. that how to handle situations mm -hmm. and how to uh, how to handle crisis right. and uh, these days uh, almost all schools are very conscious about uh, about such things right, and right. we are also holding such activities in school that right. uh, students should develop emotionally and right. they should know that this uh, we should not start to talk about something uh, once we are facing an uh, emotional upheaval let Ooh. that pass right. understand the situation and then talk about it which is and why let's move on to Cass <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I believe that you know the way that Cass is moving Cass needs to say something first of all first of all go ahead what were you thinking uh, I'm thinking uh, first of all I would like to thank you and Pakistan Television for inviting me in this show. Thank you so much. <laughs> it hard. was my dream to come in this show. Wow, wow. That, that's that's wonderful. Now, you know, your principal over here, worthy principal, is saying that you know that you guys indulge into activities where you have a lot of emotional control over your own self, right? Yes. So, what sort of activities do you do at school to make sure that you have more control on your own self? Uh, we stay silent during a class. <laughs> Not but that. Not no, 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 but, but we are asking about your co-curricular activity. Yeah. What sort of co-curricular activities do you go? You we guys play cricket, teamwork, yes. you we know, a lot of art classes. Do you go to trips? Yes, we go. Where do you go? We go to Lok Vista for watching mm -hmm. story of our a story of our provinces. Wow. Right. The, I think that the story of Gilgil Baltistan was most interesting. What really? was interesting about it? Uh, because they told us that the glaciers were alive. 
Oh, really? really? Yes. What and do we, we mean watched a video video about that. Yeah, yeah. wow, that's yeah. wonderful. And, and what did you think about it? Is it true? Yes. No, oh. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's important because the kid is thinking yeah. that you know, this cannot happen, thinking. right? Yeah. This is a critical thinking skill. But now, ma'am, let, let's move on to you. Like Shazad mentioned, that it's important that we incorporate multilingualism in our educational ah. patterns. And he also talked about that how it's important to learn in your first language of mother tongue, right? And we do yeah. see in Pakistan that there's... Um, you know, a detachment towards, uh, you know, when we talk about the education system, that too, moving away from your mother tongue, right? So, Punjabi is not taught. Sindhi is not taught. Pashto is not taught as a subject. We are taught in English, mostly English, Kashmir right? Kashmiri is not taught. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, um, basic education should be given in mother tongue. Hmm. If you see around the countries which are having, which are valuing their mother tongue, hmm. they are progressing at a of faster course, pace. Yes. So, uh, we are not paying much attention to our mother language. Mm -hmm. okay. But for multilingualism, it is actually important to understand other cultures, mm -hmm. other practices which you are not following, but some other people are following. Right, right, right. now in this age of uh, terrorism, I would call it an era of terrorism. Digital so terrorism, we yeah. And there are so many things that we are not able to embrace the difference. Right, right. And we are not uh, tolerating difference of opinion mm -hmm. um, and di difference of opinion, difference of practices. We are not into that. Yep. Right. So here, if you are promoting multilingualism, if you are learning more languages, so then uh, you would be able to um, accept global culture and you would be able to mingle with multicultural uh, people more mm -hmm. easily right. and it will help you uh, in your employability as and, well. And that's exactly something that I read <coughs> in a book once as well and it said that you know that if you're going to socialize with people who are not mm -hmm. your age, who does not belong to the place that you belong, you know, who are not geographically uh -huh. located where you are, mm -hmm. You know, and they do not speak the same language. You know, you will certainly grow faster, and that's how things oh, really? are. Exactly. That's interesting, now, yeah. now imagine that you know, if you're going to surround uh, yourself with people who are from probably Sudan, people who are from ah. United Kingdom, people who are from yeah, somewhere yeah. else, Africa. You know, so imagine that you will get to know about the culture as well, their work ah. practices, and how people are doing businesses in different. Because ah, that's the most that I'm interested important. in. Kya kaise hota? You know, ah. that's that's one thing. And right now, yeah. like Pakistan is facing economic challenges, so it's it's very important that that you should, you should you should invest <laughs> invest heavily in education. Yeah. Right. This right. is very important to invest heavily in in education because uh, there is a positive relationship between education mm -hmm. and the economic but do you stability. think is it the same education model that we need to invest in or do you think that there needs to be another education model now it, imagine it should be i will give you an example now imagine that you know that there are schools which are coming up with these plans where cast you need to listen yeah. to this we, they're coming up with these plans that whatever the student wants to learn that particular day the stu school should actually make sure that you know that they are able to teach him or her you know whatever the student wants to learn however they want to do they want to do it while standing while lying down you know they do not want to go into art class they want to play cricket you know so how do you think that these models need to change actually mm -hmm. schools <laughs> schools are uh, school should be a disciplined place there there has to be a timetable so mm -hmm. in the in the beginning of the session you make your choices or decisions yeah. not in between yeah, so yeah. Uh, a child cannot come and say one fine morning that today i am not going to uh, to take this these <laughs> these many classes and i would be sitting in library or yeah. i would be there in computer yeah. lab no it's not like that okay. school has to follow a model all right and and i think it's important that uh, as teachers or as elders, as parents, we need to teach our children how to set strict boundaries, right? Yes. Yes. And you are only going to teach that strict boundaries when you try to imitate that, right? Or when you try to uh, uh, put them in the place in the first place, right? And this is how kids learn. And in their practical life, they won't have choices. Of Whatever course. situation is coming up, they have to <laughs> face it. Right. So they <laughs> should be ready <laughs> for the real <laughs> life <laughs> challenge. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I think, think that's a bigger challenge, Ajay, as well. Now imagine, you know, because this is something that I realize. I'm very sorry that I'm barging in. But imagine that my parents didn't actually allow all of us seven siblings to take a day off from school. No matter how ill you were, no matter what the, what the problem was, no matter what the issues were surrounding us, whether the car's broken or whatnot, 
but my mother and father has always made sure that we are regular to the school and imagine how it has translated into us now we do not take day day off no, from no, work but, but you know we working parents are needed <laughs> <laughs> that they should not let children take day off right. yeah i think so because like the mother's oversleep now you know so unfortunately when uh -huh. i'm sorry but you know this is something that i witnessed if the mothers haven't slept you know probably they slept late at night whatever they were doing you know ah. so the next morning she does not feel like now, now there are more the kids options are available for well. mothers as well yani yeah. we, we can never generalize the situation or, or fathers, of, okay. of, obviously yes Let yes we do that as well yes of course because uh, today's life is very different now kes moving on to you yes. so what do you aspire to be when you grow up what sort of career have you think about yourself i want to become a scientist and make mm -hmm. a time machine make Very a time, time machine, machine. why why time machine you want to go i want to go in the past then correct my mistakes in my paper yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so get 100% marks even if then i what will happen then what will happen if you get 100% then 100%? i will top you will you, you, you know even if i would have a time machine i would never go back to you know redo my exam rather i think i'll choose to go probably 100 years ahead you know because imagine then we will have flying cars there will be so much technology yeah. you know probably that fascinates to, uh, me to kind of go and witness we well, are certainly we're not sure whether we're going to live another 100 years or and not and i also want uh, i will go in the past 1400 years ago back and i will meet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mashallah mashallah that yeah that's that's what the time machine can or should be used for alhamdulillah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam but do you think that in the past you, you if you want to go in the past how do you think that you will certainly make sure that you go to top your exams once again are you going to cheat then no then are It, you going to prepare well Are you I, going I to will, not repeat the mistakes that you made? Yes, I will not repeat the mistakes I have made, and I will give my hundred percent. Is there anything else that you would want to do if you go back in time? Do you want to do something for your mother and father as well? Yes. What? What? I want. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Take your time. Think. Huh. Please, it's, it's perfectly okay. Yeah. So whatever you, I'm going to give Cass a minute. so that he can think that you know if there's something okay. that he would want to do for and, his and mother and father as yes, well yes, and, and come and back to ma'am over here meanwhile we can move a conversation so uh, yeah sure i will become a businessman yeah oh good and become rich yeah. and i will try my best to become the most rich, uh, most rich person in the world the good news is that you can still do it along the line you you still you know you're a little baby along the way you're growing up and you aspire uh -huh. to do all of these things and you should do it you know and please make sure that you know that whatever discipline is required whatever hard work is required whatever honesty is required that you put into it wow. and inshallah you will get it as well cast you know our pray our prayers are with you as well thank you right mashallah mashallah right but do money. share some money you know <laughs> come back in the machine machine uh. and you know some day you know meet me and hajra <laughs> over here on the show give us some money go back <laughs> okay i will also donate some money in pools wow so oh, that that's that's a beautiful yeah, thought uh, but now ma'am no, let's move on to the conversation so now let's examine the education system like ah. shazad mentioned and also um the modern needs of digitalization right so we've seen post covid how um, the digital technology is extremely incorporated in the education system mm. uh, sure. shed some light on what are your opinions on that do you think it's a good development obviously we need to live with that because social media digital technology is embedded into our lives we cannot stay away from that mm. right um but how can we more productively use that so that the kids also become not addicts to them but more productive citizens this uh, these digital platforms are especially very very important for those who are slow in learning okay uh, these days we are facing problems that there are many autistic children oh, yes. coming mm. in classes so for those uh, they learn better if there is uh, drill and repetition okay. so through digital uh, platforms they can watch rewatch mm -hmm. yeah, and they can uh, see the easily. yes they can revise the content again and again wow. right so th this i think um, it's wonderful mm -hmm. to have all the lessons available on youtube right. many a times we uh, suggest our weak students mm -hmm. that uh, there are a host of videos available you can watch you can see different phenomena wow. science geography we are not having um, an ocean or a sea in punjab so here when we are talking about tides waves the boulders which are found uh, near coastal areas so we rely on all these videos video lessons and, for and that that's, that's and they are really helpful that that's really important conversation because shazad and i have spoken a lot about inclusive learning inclusive ah. education and this now it really made me proud by the way yeah yeah, yeah. 
and we've seen that how because of the lot of obsession towards the social media and the screen time that is exceeding uh, the limit we are witnessing like you mentioned a boom or, or a surge in this and uh, there are you know there are um, websites available for children even in summer break we are always uh, suggesting video links mm -hmm. we are we are giving them uh, packs of worksheets mm -hmm. that are available online yeah. and they can uh, print them and they can do it or mm -hmm. there are uh, uh, portals in which they can do it and then submit but it but and but teachers but can check it. A lot of learning it. management but systems as well. We, we do ah. have it but, but because of the paucity of the time, Madam, very quickly, um, in the last a few minutes, please explain to us what are some of the challenges that you as someone who is practically an expert in the field is facing when we talk about uh, inclusive learning models because if ah. you go into the class there are 30 kids you know 20 kids or 40 kids and it's very difficult for one teacher to <laughs> who can't yes, learn yes, yes to cater to it's the needs of all of them and especially yes, who have it's, different it's needs not yeah. easy it's yes. not easy because the uh, the curriculums are designed in oh, such yes. a manner oh, that yes. we have to uh, like the destination is same for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. True. Starting point is same. De starting point is different, but destination is the same. So teachers, they they uh, they cannot change the objectives of the lesson. Oh, yes. They cannot change the content. Only they can change the way through which they are approaching the content. Exactly. Right. And like we are, uh, sometimes we change uh, the examination paper pattern for those students. Right. We go to more objective type questions. Okay. And while the, the oh. and there are one or two students for which we can do this. And, and the whole class, the other children are following the same pattern. Right. And the end examination is always in written form. Yes, right. Whatever they are learning, how, how much activity based mm -hmm. uh, things they are doing, uh, most credit is given to the written work wow. in examination. Wow. Right. So right. is it more of reproduction of what they have learned or is it more of whatever they can come up with on that day? Uh, it's concept based. Okay. It's, not, it's not the reproduction of okay. whatever they have just learned. read and they are just reproducing Indeed. it. Their learning is important. They learn the concept and then they answer the questions. Awesome. But writing is important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, so in, 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 other, in, well. in other words, uh, you know, I think this she highlighted a very important point, which is she said that entire system is biased in the favor of the kids uh, who are not neurodiverse, right? Huh. People who have kids who have autism, who have these learning disabilities or a neurodivergent sort of a behavior. So, I think it's high time that we have this conversation, and especially people who are listening, that we need to broad and diversify the subjects right and incorporate the needs of those students who learn differently because they're as much part of a society as any ah. other person is right there's and no Hadwin, need to discriminate it's beautifully that said as well that you know that the starting point and the finish line is the same so you true, know so what however the teachers can accommodate and help true. you know according to their education ah. model they will always true. do that just mm -hmm. one last question before we wrap it up and that's uh, that is that you know just yesterday i spoke about it that you know my daughter was five years old sat down in front of her desktop <laughs> and, and she started crying because she has never seen a desktop. See, the, so there's technology is changing, it's evolving, you know. So how do you think that your school in particular scans is making sure that we adapt with technology, the laptops come in, the iPads come in? Uh, we are really mindful about that, okay. that we are trying our best to provide the best facilities. And like we have introduced some subjects which are not being taught in many of other schools. Mm -hmm. Like we are teaching robotics oh, sure. oh, wonderful. from class one onwards. Wow. And then uh, we are having another subject that, that is related to computer languages. Wow. Wonderful. So th there are four periods a week mm -hmm. that are uh, uh, devoted for this computer learning. Imagine and if and this digit, yeah. these, these platforms are being introduced to the students. And if there's a lot, of, a lot more basics that you need to understand about computer languages or the True. software models. And if you do that, you know, in your early years, I don't think that it will be difficult for you all of a sudden when you enter your university. But Cass, thank you so much for being with us. Do you thank want to say so something? Much. Yes, I would like to say that we should get educa education at any cost. Wow. Ah. That's I think my professor right. said that get education even if you have to go to China. Yeah. At that time, China was far away from Arab. So we have to get education at any ah. cost. Wow, that's that's right. I would also like to endorse sure, what sure. he's saying because I've seen people families, communities growing and flourishing, even growing uh, economically yes. when they are investing in education. Uh, and that's, that's what it is. Thank you so thank much for saying so that. Much. 
And for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, I think that, you know, that's the right thing to say anyways. You know, we right. siblings, you know, for example, me and Haja even. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine that if, if our parents did invest in us or in our education, I don't right. think that we must have landed ourselves over true, here as true, well. True. So everybody's out there, please make sure that you do that. You know, as much as you can do it for there are people who contribute to the cause as well. There are a lot of people, NGOs working for the out of school children. Yes. You know, all you need to do is just reach out to us. You can reach out to us as well. You know, we will give you you know how you can reach out to us towards the end of the show as well right now we're heading out towards a short break but once you guys will come back imagine god forbid if you do not invest in the education or the personality development or how there needs to be an emotional balance within a personality it sure. will certainly become challenging for them when they grow up and you know it's the other way around so we're going to talk about it let us just say bye to Cass first you know so that he does not listen to what we are saying right after a short break don't go anywhere we'll be right back good morning good morning Welcome back and today happens to be 10th of September. It is the Suicide Prevention Awareness Day and when we talk about suicide prevention we have seen that how much the cases are surging and that is obviously a call that we need to talk about. So according to WHO there are 700,000 deaths that occur every year because of the suicide and these are the reported numbers. We do not know about the amount of the unreported ones and the theme of the year 2024 to 2026 is changing the narrative of suicide with a call to action, start the conversation. And when we talk about starting the conversation, obviously, um, and that is going to unleash or unshed or dissect and the culture of silence and stigma that is surrounded on the suicide. And we've seen, especially there was a study that was conducted and that, that was uh, witnessing the amount that, uh, which are the communities which are most vulnerable to the suicide attacks. And they found that in women, there um, is a higher chance of the, uh, the depression and men are mostly going to go for the suicide because of the conversations, because of the pressures here, because of the triggers and the stresses and in the modern needs, in the modern society, we have seen that there are so many uh, stresses, there is so un such an unnecessary race for the competition. All of this is contributing towards a very unhealthy, unsustainable sort of a lifestyle where we are unable to regulate our emotions. Mm -hmm. There is a conversation going on that how better you're able to regulate our emotions, but how important is it to walk the talk and have more such of conversation? So we are going to unforward, uh, sorry, forward this conversation to a very learned psychologist here. She also happens to be a social activist. She is Mashiyat Zahrai Kazmi. Assalamu alaikum, madam, and thank you so much for coming to our Malikum show. Malikum assalam. Thank you so much for and inviting. Yes. Yes, and when um, uh, WHO talks about, you know, starting the conversation, how important do you think this call to action is, you know, what causes the suicide in the first place? Do you think it's the suppression that we face? We are unable to voice ourselves um, that leads to such a disastrous step where one wants to end the life, right, end this pain. There can be multiple reasons. There can be childhood trauma too, you know. So please, let's just, you know, go through that yes, and then yes. we'll move on towards how can it get better. Uh, first of all, when we talk about the suicide and suicidal ideation, it is not the matter of one day that uh, one day I woke up and I feel like suicidal ideation and I commit suicide and someone uh, did that. There are so many uh, you know uh, references are uh, behind the wall uh, maybe related to the financial uh, crisis and the stresses related to the personal and the professional life mm -hmm. as well as uh, you know many many things are interrelated related to your relationship and your educational pressures and childhood trauma as she's has said because everything is interlinked and no. these things are building up in our mind and with the passage of time when uh, you know a certain and constant uh, hopeless leads mm. towards suicidal ideation and one commits suicide and uh, most 
importantly, most of the time what we do is we usually ignore all these symptoms. We ignore the stresses, we ignore the causes and uh, when someone feel like there is no way out and there is, you know, full stop for them for any betterment or any uh, ray of hope, so they commit suicide. But we've seen, especially when we talk about the suicides and I've seen how important do you think is the supportive family system is because I was having this conversation with someone and we were talking about that uh, you know from the outside in, in South Asian communities or in the Asian communities we have a very good strong support system family system yes. right but as much as they are good they are also very toxic in the nature right so we have seen that yes. you know, there are always some sort of yeah. um, you know so, comparison. Yes, comparison going on there is some sort of uh, I don't know how to express it in English going on right yes. so how better sure. able to you know regulate that and because these are the relations that we look up to right these are our blood relations yes. and especially we've seen a lot of sons committing suicide yeah. because the fathers there, there's no connection between no the fathers connection. right yes. and they're unable to say that right so what needs to change when it comes to parent-child relationship? Okay, so Haja, if we talk about that uh, suicidal rate is uh, higher in our uh, culture or uh, the collectivistic culture, uh, despite of the individualistic culture, it is a kind of, you know, uh, their facts and figures are uh, openly available and are, are hidden. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that we are living together in a collectivistic culture. Everyone is in a race and everyone knows that what happens in my life and yours and yours. Yeah. So there is a constant, uh, you know, pressure or comparison between each other mm -hmm. and most importantly that uh, we have a set you know um, you can say a bottle of dreams and wishes from our parents we have to fit in mm -hmm. and oh, this yeah. is uh, this is the pressure we are constantly facing that I am nicely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly yes. but in addition to this you know i let hear me on this as well now imagine that you know we're looking at the picture from this end now imagine that we're talking about you know how people unfortunately will end up thinking of suicide or finishing mm -hmm. their life. Mm -hmm. But now let's talk about unfortunately, if somebody has already committed suicide, you know, the the impact is going to be so far reaching, you know, it will have its social yes. e uh, impact, it will have its economical impact, it will have impact on the family, mm -hmm. on the future yes. generations, yes. that his dada or his father yes. or his brother or his mother or something like that. And that child will have to go through it as well. And unfortunately, you know, if there's something that which our parents might have done, unfortunately, we think that we have the right to do it too. How do you think that we need to have a conversation with the person who might think of, you know, suicide, committing suicide yeah. or the person whose family who have committed mm -hmm. suicide already can actually come together and be open about it so that, you know, at, at least they're unwinding, yes. at least they're getting rid of it. How do you think that we can do it psychologically for the people out there? Yes. One more thing I want to add up, like, uh, it is not that everyone commits suicide. There are some triggering points, like someone deliberate self-harm or hitting yourself in, you know, uh, in aggression and, you know, breaking uh, things or whatever comes in your hand and you just break it. Yeah. These are the symptoms we just ignore. Oh, he's young. This is not something to ignore. Mm -hmm. This is the highly, you know, important point to discuss. The behavior patterns. It. Yes, behavior yeah. patterns, and they should not be uh, let ignored no. chari, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and you know, <laughs> yes. I mean we make up stories like I don't know where uh, do they come from but but uh, by the end of the time when things happen and we are like oh how how come yeah. we don't know he was normal for us these all things are normal but these are because not. the parents hide now imagine that you know over here mm -hmm. because there's no conversation around it so parents won't mm -hmm. really actually tell anybody else yes. that unfortunately if their kid is going through something yeah. you know if it's troubling him or her you know they're not going to get the right medical attention mm -hmm. you know they might even not want to take him out probably just lock him in the in yes. the room yes. just because he's not uh, acting as the parents want to act so there's so many things about it now imagine god forbid you know there are people watching us in 46 yes. different countries if there's somebody going through such a situation where they have a member who they think might be suicidal maybe depression maybe. anxiety and yes. there can be any cause right how do you think that you know they can start to talk with that person in particular 
that okay beta you know tell us you know how do you think that they get on that point uh shazad first of all if a person is suicidal everyone around usually usually in our culture in collectivistic culture people are aware what are the triggering point of that yeah, person yeah. if he or she is suffering from financial you know issues no uh, job joblessness or uh, any marriage related problem or uh, you know education related because um, few days back i saw that our metric student commit suicide because of the low grades this is not something that uh, a student itself created no this is the pressure created by the society True. for them that oh you have to be the a grade parents and all the people around need to think about it that if you get a grades in all your degree is this is the guarantee for your better employment yeah, no, no. so uh, we have to educate our kids or the people around us even in jobs if someone is not giving uh, you know in corporate sector it happens a lot that if you are not giving certain you know uh, yes so you will be pressurized and usually people commit such kind of things so we have to think about it and we have to educate basically the problem here is we don't want to talk about the mental health or the well which is why i'm going to ask you now and, now and, and imagine I, yes. how to just hear me uh, on on this now how do you think that we need to prioritize mental health and suicide prevention in policy making now imagine that you know for all of this pressure that the community puts on us for example you know if we are to kind of bring ratings you know yes. from me and haja we are told obviously. bring ratings otherwise you know going to get paid and what not so one month two month three month unfortunately if it's not going to happen there will be a lot of pressure obviously. how do you think that you know we really need to make sure that you be prioritized in policy making and that every institution kind of follows that policy as well uh, these are uh, these kind of the policies will be make if the mental health and the uh, you know physical health will be important in our jobs but unfortunately here as well, well as in abroad in yes it is not considered as the important thing and it is not considered that if someone is suffering from some mental torture trauma pressure anything we think oh drama kar rahe but we misuse it as well yes. like, you know I, that's what the problem is it's important that we also analyze as a psychologist uh, the parents and uh, children relationship and all the parents want their kids to succeed right yes. but we are living in a society where uh, disciplinary strict uh, strictly disciplinarian parents are eulogized right yes. they are extolled as you know virtuous being and i think we've all been through such sort of childhood right yes. but in pursuit of that strictness right where you're not able to voice your opinion because it is considered to be disrespectful yes. do you feel that this creates a disconnect between a child and a parent and what sort of repercussions does it have when we talk about you know suicidal behavior suicidal tendencies right because a lot of time when a person is going towards this suicide it means that that person has you know left all sort of hope in all his life right hope, yes. uh, the parents that we see that they are you know our support system we go to them if anything happens yes. that option is also exhausted mm -hmm. right yes. so how important is it that we examine that relationship between child and a parents and and that you know which is coming Context, in that yeah. haja as we discussed before that we have to create a environment where everyone has to be vocal about the problem and creating this from home mm -hmm. is the most important thing to uplift our society because mm -hmm. everyone can't afford psychologists psychiatrists they can't go mm -hmm. so whatever uh, is happening to a child parents should ask on everyday basis and also they have to examine their own behaviors because we do ask oh, yes. what your teacher does to you but we never uh, think that what i am treating my kids mm -hmm. so uh, this kind of the thing and also there are so many cases hajra unfortunately where usually uh, kids commit suicide for the age of their parents mm -hmm. as we are uh, as i am not going to go uh, do a good job so i should uh, end up my life yeah, and not just that i think that what we really need to discuss at this point over here is that now imagine that if somebody is suicidal obviously he or she needs help a lot mm -hmm. of help a lot of support needs to be given to them and it needs to be a very holistic approach but imagine that that person is actually or can be harmful to his kids as well imagine yes, that we have be. had cases over here where unfortunately i do not want to say it early in the morning that the fathers actually kill yes. their oh, daughters yeah. or sons first and then they kill themselves or attempted suicide yes. now how do you think that we really need to prioritize that as well that you know that person who is actually getting suicidal first of all needs help number 1 yes. number 2 can actually be harmful to other people yes obviously whenever a patient came to us with the suicidal ideation we always ask them that whether you want to harm yourself or the people around because it Don't is you guys get scared at times that you know pata nahi kuch uh, we do but the thing is that is the point that we can help and uh, get that person out of that scenario that right. i have to take my life and unfortunately so what is it that you untrigger in their brain 
you know, so that they do not have any more suicide ideas idea. If I talk, uh, talk about the reasons, these are the silly reasons. Like if I got my C grades in my metric and I will commit suicide. So if someone before that come to us and tell that I got C's or I will tell I got so many uh, failures in yeah. my life, but still I am struggling with my, uh, right. you know. So you kind of talk, talk with yes, us, speak with us. Yes, and talking therapy is the main thing. When you talk and you went out all the things which is uh, in your con uh, conscious and unconscious yeah. mind will definitely, you know, unwind and uh, clear the things. Thank you so much for saying that, Mishia. You know, it was wonderful to be be, you know, in conversation with you and that too about such an important topic and unfortunately over here in our country, mm -hmm. you know, I do, I have seen families where they know that, you know, that their child might be suffering from such an illness or a problem and they would come up with the idea, Iski shadi kara do ye ho yeah. get him married, you know, he's going to be fine, get her married, she's going to be fine, that's not the idea, you're actually spoiling another family's life, yes. an entire family's life mm -hmm. as well. Number, uh, towards the end, the only thing I'm going to say is that the power of faith needs to come in, you know, because when you start to leave everything on Allah Almighty, when you have this belief, you will see how things will actually unfold for you. Unfortunately for us, you know, life's not the same, you know, somewhere, you know, it's going to go up, somewhere it's going to come down as well. All you need to know is that it's a test. We need to pass it because the life hereafter is going to be the life forever. And we hope and pray that we see each, each other in Jannah. I think, I think that's how Hopefully, it needs to be, right? Yes. But for all of those people who are out there, please make sure that if you're surrounded by a person or if you surround a person who might have such thought processes, please make sure that you do not debunk his idea. Whatever he or she is saying, take it seriously, go to a professional, talk with them and make sure that you give or provide them And there are also help. a lot of uh, free helplines that have cropped yes. up, especially to tackle this pandemic, I would say, of the suicides, depression and anxiety. So make sure that you use those free platforms, uh, free outlets where you can unwind yourself and uh, do not go for this very extreme step, right? With that, um, we are ending our segment. Thank you so much for watching us. Until next time, it's a goodbye. Allah Hafiz and good, good morning. morning. Look after. Thank you so much.